What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, back at you another week, another video. Today we're going to talk about how to identify male versus female boa constrictors. In this video, I'm going to show you guys a couple examples and the palpation method. So this is something where it's a non-invasive method, it does only work for boas, it works for most boas. So that includes boa constrictors, different boa localities like BCC, BCL, it also works for rainbow boas and dumerals boas. I don't think it works for others, but for those boa species, it does work for, and I will give you some just kind of one side of caution, just like most methods for identifying male versus female boas, you have to be careful because their tails are sensitive, especially as babies. This will not work on adult boas. Usually once they hit about a year or two in age, their muscles around their tail that I'm going to show you are going to be too thick, too developed, and unless you really know what you're doing, and even somebody like myself who I've seen hundreds or thousands of boas, I still probably cannot successfully do this on adult boas. There are other ways to do adult boas, but nothing that's super reliable. I will talk about those towards the end of the video, but let's dive into the babies. Here I have a beautiful little blood that is also head sharp. Uh, this is not a hypo, but very, very pretty blood head sharp. And what I want to do is show you kind of what I'm looking at. So there's our boa. And then what we need to do is we need to go towards the vent. I'm going to get off camera so you can see my hands. It stops focusing in. But you need to find the vent, the cloaca over here. And there are other methods. You know, you could pop the snake. But what we do for boas is right at the vent, you just push down gently and you'll feel two little bumps. I just felt them right where my hand is. So the vent is up here, and then the little bumps were there. Those are the hemipenes for the snake. So again, I'll show you that one more time. You basically start at the, at the vent and just move down. Bumps right there, two little BBs. For males, it will always be two little BBs. Sometimes you won't feel both, but basically what you're doing is you're stretching out their hemipenes, and then you'll feel the end of them, and that's when you'll feel the bumps because they'll actually retract back. So you'll feel a little bump, bump, and that's always on male boas, male rainbow boas, whatever it may be. This snake wants to bite me, but he's still just, I mean, he doesn't, they don't, they don't love it when you do that to them. I mean, it's, it is what it is. That's the only way you can sex them, or the only way you can identify them properly, or you could pop them, but because boas have longer hemipenes and their tail is different structure than a python, I find that it's actually really difficult to pop a boa. I can pop pythons very easily, but for boas, it's not as easy, and I don't find that as reliable, because I might pop a snake and see no hemipenes come out. In that case, I might label it as a female, but then that's not actually a female. So when I sell my animals, I always double, triple, and before I even label them, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll identify them, I'll put them in their appropriate caging, I'll then go back, I'll check it again, I'll probably check it one more time before I post the pictures on my website, and then I'll check it one more time before I sell them, because the last thing I want to do, or should I say before I ship them out, the last thing I want to do is send a snake that's misidentified or, or improperly um, identified as male versus female. So again, right there at the base of the tail, and I'm going to do this with others, but right at the base of the tail, you just feel two little bump bumps right there. So I just felt them. Let me go get a female. It's not like you can really see this. I mean, I hope you can see a little bit, but let me go get another snake and see if that gives you better an example. We're back and now I have, this is a Hypo Aztec IMG that is also 100% het for T positive. Uh, her belly is a little bit clearer, so maybe this is gonna be easier to see, but this is a female and I'm feeling nothing. So females are less reliable because sometimes they can hide it. So you're just gonna keep doing that. I usually do it three or four times. By the time they're this size, this is, in my opinion, the ideal size to do this. This snake is a couple months old. Uh, I will not have this specific one, but I will have litter mates from this on, on the website for sale. I just haven't figured out which ones I wanna keep and hold back. It's a T-positive albino project that I've been working with for a long time and I want to keep them all like usual, but I just can't. I am going to keep a good amount of them back. This is one of them. Uh, but again, I don't need IMG to IMG for everything. So with all that said, kind of getting back to the, the identification video, 
is females where you can go wrong is sometimes you don't feel them. So if the snake is too young, sometimes it can be hard because the hemipenes haven't developed. If it's too large, they've built up too much muscle around the tail to really feel those hemipenes anymore. So this kind of, you know, four month old age is like the ideal age to practice on. And if you have snakes at home, I would recommend find yourself a male. And as soon as you fail them, you'll know exactly what you just felt and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you start with a female, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because you may or may not know what you're even supposed to feel. So I always recommend start with the male. Sometimes, you know, you can, again, you can usually feel this up to bow is about a year to a year and a half old, uh, depending on their size, but usually once they're kind of past that year and a half mark, two years, you're not gonna be able to feel anything unless you're really good. Uh, also keep in mind different locales, like a, like bow constrictor longicata, they have a super long tail. What I've done and I've seen people do in the past is they didn't go down far enough. So the hemipenes on a boa will typically, you'll usually feel them about a quarter of the way down their tail. So if this is the tail here, you're usually gonna feel it about a quarter of the way from the vent to the bottom of the tail. But there are some bows that have very long ones and you almost have to go like halfway down. I've noticed that with Sonoran bows specifically is that if you don't go down far enough, you will identify that as a female because you didn't go down far enough to feel the bumps. I'm gonna grab a couple more, we'll do it really quick and then I wanna dive into some adults. This animal here is a hypo that had blood. He was born in February, really pretty animal. I'm gonna get off camera again so you can take a better look at him and not me. Uh, really pretty snake. He's up on the website available now as well as many others. The link is in the description below. But uh, as you can see, I'm gonna pop, pull right there and right there was where I just felt it. But he's almost getting at the age where it's finding, it's being more difficult to find those hemipenes. Uh, they're able to hide them more. They're able to contract their muscles more. I'm gonna do that one more time on this animal. So there's the vent. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus on my hands. And that there's the vent and right there is where I felt it. So vent is here. Hemipenes ended there, and that's the rest of the tail. I'm gonna get one more example, and then again, we'll dive into those adults. This is my last example that I wanna do for the babies. This is a little uh, hypo blood that's also special. Special is one of my lines that I've been working with for a little bit. Uh, they're just unique looking animals. I mean, look at the belly on this. This the They're just crazy looking animals. Again, hypo blood that's also uh, I believe what I'm calling special. Special is my own line of, of boas. I haven't really made it super public because I want to make sure that it is a thousand percent legitimate a new morph before I really start to sell them. Until then, I've really been holding a bunch of stuff back. But uh, it's also uh, het T positive, but it's not a it's not a compatible line with other T positive lines. So I do think it's its own unique T positive line. I just need to do more before I make it super public. And uh, I know I've made videos on them in the past. You guys have seen them. It's not a, a hidden project. It's just something that I don't really care to blast out there. I, I'm not I'm not all about world's first and new morphs. I, I just do my own thing. So with that said, let's look at this one more animal. Uh, again, this animal was born in June, late June, so early July. It's now mid-August. But right there, you see how close that was to the vent. That's why I wanted to show a couple different examples is, man, that belly's crazy, but right, there's the vent, and then right there. So just a, and maybe eight or nine scales, about 10 scales away, if I can count that. That's where I felt it. The first time I felt it really close, it was about three scales away. So they do have some control over that. Let me go get some larger snakes, and I'll show you how I can identify those. This is an animal that's a little bit larger. This is a, a Paraglo Key West blood or a Paradigm Key West blood, which is a Het Sharp, Het Bow Woman Caramel, uh, and a blood and also Key West. Really cool animal, was not produced by me. Uh, I don't even think the breeder's still around, so we won't talk about him for a lot of good reasons. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna show you why it's you know more difficult. Now, with older snakes, this is, this is the difficult age to identify. This is almost the age where if you don't know what you're looking at, uh, you almost need to probe it to figure out what it is because you can't really palpate it. 
the spurs are not developed large enough to really identify reliably and we're going to get into that in just a couple minutes here uh, but I want to emphasize this size right here, this aged snake, the one that's in like the, the two to three year range, is the most difficult because as snakes get older, males will typically develop larger spurs. I've also heard that they start to get little keels on their scales around their uh, around their spurs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with the spurs, it's, it's these kind of, it's the things right next to the vent, uh, the little spurs they have there. So males, as they get older, those will continue to develop. And I, again, I've heard they have like little keeled scales around there. I, I mean, maybe my eyes are just terrible, but you need like a microscope to see that or a magnifying glass. So if you're looking really hard, I don't know when they develop that. I would imagine as they mature, I mean, I can't see anything, but I guess if you looked real hard with the magnifying glass, maybe you could. I, again, I don't know if you can even see it at this age. So really, Trusting the breeder is very important. There's so many times where people tell me, hey, I got a male or I got a female and it's not what it was supposed to be. So that's unfortunate. If that ever happened to me, I don't know what I would do. Uh, speaking of that, we had a whole good conversation on my Patreon about that. If you're looking for a whole community to get some community chats and just some cool stuff, one-on-one -on -one time with me, whatever you want, there's different tiers for that. Uh, consider joining that. Link is in the description below. But uh, yeah, let's let's take a look at this snake. He's being really difficult right now because he doesn't come out super often and I have rats defrosting in the room, so he's probably smelling those. But this is a snake. I'm gonna get off camera again and he's not even letting me get his tail. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm feeling nothing. I just actually did feel something. So right there is where I felt it. So that was actually probably, I don't know, that's maybe 15 scales. So that's that's kind of where I felt the bumps. If I get off camera again. So here's the vent, here's where I felt them and there's the rest of the tail. So you can, I guess, still feel, but I was having trouble feeling that. So at this size, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you're gonna be able to feel it. I felt it really clear right there. If you get the snake stressed out and worked up, it's not gonna be able to, to do this. But uh, the more relaxed they are, the better because they'll relax all of their muscles, including all the muscles around their, their hemipenes. You can kind of visually see it, but that's not reliable. You need to feel it. So I'm gonna get the next size up. Next size up, male VPI Sunglow Jungle. I produce this guy here. I have some killer looking uh, VPI Motleys on the website right now. Um, I am feeling nothing. Again, if I was feeling hard enough or long enough, I could probably feel something, but this is the age where it becomes almost impossible. So this is a 20 or 2019 animal. So this is uh, about three years old now because it's August 2022. It was born likely three years ago. Uh, this is actually a good size comparison video too, but really beautiful snake. The problem is if I just were to see this at a reptile show and somebody was like, yeah, I'm gonna sell it to you. It's a female, seems like a great deal. And that's where a lot of people get ripped off is they'll get labeled as females when it's actually a male because the vendor doesn't know what they're feeling for or what they're looking for. Now, I actually did just feel that, the bumps in the animal. So <clears throat> I only felt it once, but that's again where uh, people can misidentify these animals as being male or female. Let me see if I can show you his his uh, his spurs a little bit here, and you can kind of see these spurs are a little bit bigger. Unfortunately, until these animals get very mature, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between a male and a female. So I, I will show, or I actually I, I will try to show an adult female, but the spurs again don't use this reliably where i would typically use this is if i have two very similar looking animals like let's say a locale if i'm trying to breed my my longicata or my tarahumara boas and i don't know which one's the male or the female once i mix them together because they're about the same size and they look so similar i'll look at their tail their tails i will look at their tail spurs and that will be my quick way to figure out which one's the male and which one's the female and i can separate them but i would never use that to reliably purchase an animal so if i were at a reptile show now if i had two of those animals together i'd be able to say okay that's the male that's the female but i would never be able to reliably go into a show find a single animal and say i'm gonna buy that because it's a female or a male um, 
yeah, I can't feel it again. So I felt it once, very, very light, but the more he's moving, the more active he is, the more he's gonna hide those in his muscles. He's just flexing his tail. So if you can get them to relax, you may be able to feel it, but right now I got nothing. So let me show you those larger snakes and then we'll close the video. I have two Tarahumara boas here, and if you looked at them from size alone, they're basically identical in terms of size. This one's actually a little bit bigger, but the pattern is really similar. So this is the kind of the example I was talking about. I figured instead of me talking about the example, let me just show it to you. So I have, I know what I have in each hand, but this is the female, this is the male. The male is actually a little bit bigger than the female because she just laid some babies. I believe at this point in time, I have one baby left and it's available on my website. So if you are looking for these, they're super rare, very hard to find and getting rarer as people continue to find out about them. But check that out, don't miss your chance if you're looking for that. It's probably too late by the time you see this video, but figured I would mention it. So with this kind of, here's, these are both adult female or adult snakes. Um, I'll try to get this to focus in, but there's basically no tail spurs. You can't see anything on this snake. So for that purpose, this female has really nothing. I mean, even off camera, I can't see it. So I'm gonna put her back and let's take a quick look at the male. And here is the male who's wrapped way around my arm tight. And although I cannot palpate him at this point because his tail muscles are too thick, you can almost see his spurs, if I can get the camera to focus on it, right there. You can see this spur that's kind of sticking out. So that is the easy way to identify. Hopefully this camera was able to focus for you. Let me see if I can get one more if I push it. Right there is the tail spur above my finger, what was above my finger. So that is the tail spur. And that is how, if I put them together, I would be able to tell, okay, this is the male, that's the female. So super cool animals, but that is really the only way that I know of to identify the male and female. Again, you could probe them, but if you don't know what you're doing, please don't do that. You could potentially really injure the snake by doing that. So, and then at that point, male versus female doesn't matter because you probably just killed its breeding potential or really killed the snake. So you won't kill the snake, but you could cause infections that could ultimately lead to that. So with all that said, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys liked the snakes that I was showing you. And until next week, let's keep moving. Thanks.